executive director of the American Chamber of Commerce. This third neighbor strategy includes obviously, um, Hong, uh, it includes Japan and South Korea, but the United States is the core of it, isn't it? This idea of a strong military and economic relationship. Indeed, uh, Mongolia has in place what is called third neighbor policy and the U.S. is a core brings together the military peacekeeping where Mongolia has been a very, uh, relying on U.S. support and I think it's uh, Mongolia also can offer to the U.S. that we have this unique position in the whole in the Pacific region surrounded by Russia and China so we have this uh, quite a unique position where we, we that, bring out that reality of being sandwiched between the two does that you know, how much is the U.S. being looked at as a lifeboat in the event of real trouble? Uh, the, I think the U.S. would be in the critical uh, stakeholder and partner for us because uh, we're, the country is looking for the third neighbors that have been offering the... We're looking for the investment, we're looking for the businesses that will come to Mongolia and will counterbalance this whole kind of dependency on these two authoritarian neighbors. You've got lots of companies who are already here resource mining, uh, the various contractors. But what areas can the U.S. increase investment? What industries do you think can be attracted here that will diversify that interest? Exactly. So if we put aside mining, so exactly. we put aside mines, we can offer renewable energy. I think that's really when now the world is moving towards this energy transition. I think Mongolia can offer renewable energy. We have so much sun, wind. I think that's really the sector where the U.S. can be, can leverage and come to with the investment, with the technology, know-how to really come to the country and be a partner. There's an entire range of MOUs. The elevation of the, of the relationship to strategic, uh, strategic neighbor, strategic partnership, what does that mean in reality? It's, uh, I would say, put, put in a kind of political statement, I would say, this strategic partnerships that really helping Mongolia to be, have this uh, kind of uh, umbrella where you can, we can negotiate with, other, with our two immediate neighbors and also approach other sort of neighbors, the EU, Japan, saying we have this strategic partnership with the US, so we're open to have a more closer collaboration partnership. Probably it will take a long way to have the real concrete right. results. The, the, there's going to be an election here next year. Um, the democracy is 30 years old. It's, it, 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 it's, it's thriving quite well, considering the external pressures. I mean, when you look at everything concerned, it's actually doing remarkably well. Absolutely. Mongolia is such a young democracy over 30 years, but we have this irreversible, really, shift toward democracy, free enterprise and free, free market. <coughs> and I think if you look at this map, so. The, this country, Mongolia, is the only democracy in this whole region. Right. Quick question. What, do you ride horses? Not that much, honest, to be But honest. you have ridden a horse. Oh, yeah. Because every Mongolian rides yeah, a yeah, horse. Yeah, 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 I did. And you probably wrote, started riding at a very early age. When I was a teenager, maybe. Uh, which is kind of old. Uh, there you, exactly. <laughs> he starts as a teenager, quite old. Because look at the map, and I'll show you the size and scale. Sir, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The